Hey everybody, in this continuation of the Journal Club series, we'll be discussing useful tips to start reading research articles. In the previous video, we discussed ways to search for your research articles of interest while reviewing what the different types of articles are. So be sure to check out that video if you'd like to apply the techniques we discuss in this video to an article you want to start reading. To begin, let's review what the overall structure of a research article is. Most scientific articles are organized as follows, with each part of the publication, from the title to its references, providing critical information about the paper you are reading. However, all this information can make the paper seem initially overwhelming, so it's important to be purposeful in how you approach these different sections. Instead of reading a research article cover to cover, like how you would for a novel or a storybook, you should approach the research article with pointed questions. For example, if you're interested in understanding how an experiment was conducted, you might go directly to the methodology. Or, if you're more interested in learning about how the literature in the field relates to each other, you might go to the introduction for a literature review, or to the references where all the cited works are. But how will you know what questions to ask about an article when you're just starting to read a paper? This is where the title and abstract of a paper can help. You may have noticed that a lot of research articles have very detailed and verbose headings. This wordiness can actually help us when we first approach a paper of interest, with these titles acting as a one-sentence summary of the article, from what topic we are investigating to, to which type of research article we are reading, to why this research is being done, to how it's being done, and in some cases, who even is the investigation's target population. The title can give us so much invaluable cursory information about what to expect from the paper. Of course, not every article title includes all of this information, but this provides a great starting point and mini introduction to what we will be reading in our paper. To get a more detailed summary of what the paper is, we have to turn to the abstract. Similar to the title, the abstract provides key information about who, what, why, and how the research was conducted. This even more detailed synopsis of the publication is designed to provide readers with a complete and concise understanding of the article. While you read the abstract, be sure to have four different colors of highlighters or pencils available so that you can visually separate the information presented in the abstract. I usually use blue to represent any background information, purple to note the purpose or research question of the article, red to underscore the results from the study, and green to highlight what methods were used in the paper. If these sections are not already clearly labeled for you, you can differentiate between them in the abstract based on key words used by the investigators. For example, gap words such as however, although, and yet are often used in background sections to let the reader know what is missing from the current literature. Showing words such as exhibits, signals, demonstrates, reveals, and etc. can be used in the abstract to explain what methodologies were used to get to a key conclusion of the study. Centering phrases such as here, in this paper, and we hope to, emphasize what the goals are for the investigators, centering the point or reason for conducting the investigation in the first place. Conversely, conclusive words such as thus, finally, and lastly actually tell us what the key conclusion or result of the study was. Future words like anticipate, predict, foresee, and expect can also be used when discussing results to help us understand the implications of such findings and what researchers down the line should focus on when conducting their own investigation. Here's an example of using such keywords to help us determine what the different components of an unlabeled abstract are. From these notes, we can already start developing questions to guide us to where we should read next in our paper. For example, we know that the researchers use experimental techniques like MRI scanning, single nucleus profiling, anatomical and functional tracings, and in vivo recordings of neural activity to support their conclusions in this abstract. But we may not know what all of these procedures actually entail. So we can go straight to the methodology section located at the end of this paper to learn more about such techniques. In this way, our initial notes and gatherings from the abstract and title can act as a roadmap for where we may want to read more and allow us to be more purposeful and targeted in our reading of the research paper. After you answer any lingering questions you may have from the abstract through a quick purview of the respective section, move on to the discussion or conclusion section of the paper. This is where you should take the most detailed notes and spend time with understanding what the researchers were trying to do with their paper. It may seem unusual to start with the end of the paper when trying to get a deeper understanding of the work, but it's important to remember that the conclusion is where the actual implications of a study are discussed. 
Previous sections like the introduction and results just presented you with information, like what previous researchers had done and what data was collected through this investigation. The conclusion is where all of this information is synthesized, and the researchers string together a compact, easy-to-follow narrative for the reader to understand the journey of the research. Again, from your notes in the discussion, you can see what part of the paper you still want to learn more about and still have questions for. I hope that these tips and advice on how to read a research article help you in your journey as you continue to engage with academic papers. In the podcast version of this series, we will start reading and reviewing some of the example papers included in this video, so be sure to look out for more information about the podcast on my channel. Until then, happy reading!